not a hostile takeover, but we're just, the pastor gave this to us, and we're taking this over the last Sunday of every month, um, but it's, it's exciting to where the, uh, it allows our young people to grow, um, kind of step out of their comfort zone, grow in, in ministry. Um, so this is our first one, so uh, hopefully this room will be able to contain all the craziness that's, that this, this uh, youth service will be. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to kick this off, and uh, it's going to be a little different, um, but it's, we're going to have church, so don't uh, just, just have church like, like we normally would. We might have a little less room up here, you know, we're, we got used to the Shannon suite, and we had some altar space up here, but we're all family, so if, you know, if, if this... If God's moving on you, press me to step out, move the chair. <laughs> but, uh, go ahead and have church today. That was his idea. Beep, beep. There you go. Beep, beep. What do you want? Beep. Can you lock it, beep? <laughs> What do you want? Well, you had a sticker. Oh, wait, wait. You had a sticker on your bumper that says, How can you love Jesus? So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you guys, we killed that. From 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, and it says, If a man say, I love God, and hated his brother, he is a liar. Right. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he, whom he had not seen? All right, all right. So basically the little skit we have here is just like, you know, even if you're having a bad day, you, again, like, uh, you should be able to be a Christian. You know, love your enemies. If you don't learn to love them, then how would you learn to love God whom oh, right. you can't see? Is what the verse is saying. If you can't learn how to love the people that you can see and interact with and talk with and have, you know, uh, a physical um, interaction with, then how could you love God who, you know, who speaks in a quiet voice, yeah. who comes down during your prayer time, who comes every so often, and I guess it, it's up to you whether you initiate the conversation with God or not, but God would not always be there physically. So, yeah. like, so how could you be, be able to be a Christian if you don't? Um, I thought it was a little funny, so, and I thought we crushed it. So, <laughs> I I need to be thankful. I want, I want to 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 let you know give that testimony so that others can know you know what God has done in my life, what He's done for me, and I want uh, our young people. I want to start you know I'm start small right now. I I told I I, uh, I kind of put that out there. I said I'm not going to call on you right this this first time. I'm gonna go ahead and take volunteers, okay. but from now on, I'll be calling on you guys. So, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and ask Anna if she would come up and give testimony. Hi guys. <clears throat> okay, so glasses. Hey, I got new glasses, so I can see if you're reacting to this well. Okay. So, <laughs> there are times where we feel distant from God, because I know for certain that I have. There are times where you know you're you're praying to him and you're asking for help, but it seems like he's not answering, he's not responding to what we're saying. And these moments can make us feel impatient and like God doesn't want to listen to us. But have we tried asking ourselves that question, which is what is it that's keeping us from from hearing the the voice of God? And the answer is distractions. You no, know, it's your phone, Netflix, work, school, it's everywhere. And because, of, because we've become so glued to these distractions that we only leave that few minutes at the end of the day for God. How are we supposed to become familiar to His voice if we don't take the time to get to know Him? That's right. How can I know Him and not just of Him? Come on. So this is something I've been doing, just taking time off every day from absolutely everything. That means turning off my phone, switching Netflix off, or taking a break from school, or in some people's case, work. My daily routine has always been wake up, go to school, um, go home, go do my homework, eat, and then straight away I would go on my phone on my bed. Yeah. And at the very end of the day, I would read a chapter of, a, of, of a, the Bible. But that's not enough because God is looking for some time in us. Now, without realizing it, I created that space and that distance between me and God. 
and because of this I've become very unfamiliar to his voice. So what I did is I restricted myself from going on any social media in the morning until I've read my Bible or until I've prayed. And this small change, I'm telling you, it, it, it's going to make a big difference in your life. So this small change over time closed that space and that distance for me and God. Come on, I, like that. I could be on my bed, on my phone, and next thing I know, God is calling me out to pray or, or read His Word. Whereas before, I, I could be on my phone for hours without putting it down because I've missed His call. First Chronicles 16, 11 says, Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face continually. Now the key word in that verse is continually. Because continually doesn't mean only every Sunday. It doesn't mean only when you're facing hardship. Continually means always, unseasonally, and through your good days and through your bad days. God is always listening to us and He always answers. But the problem is not God, it's us. The real questions that we need to be asking us is, are we listening to what God has to say to us? And are we able to hear what He's saying to us? So that's it. <laughs> she, she, you know, she always gives me like she's like, oh, this, yeah. like, if I, this is gonna be tough, you know. And then every time she gets up here, she goes ahead and gives us a mini mini sermon. In Sunderland, she did the same thing and it just blew, blew me away. But she, she's fabulous. God's got an awesome call on her life. But I, I, I want to go ahead and ask. I'm gonna ask Fandy. We've not got to hear much from Fandy, so she yeah. is so nice. I asked. Her, she would testify, and she said, by all means, she wanted to testify, so. So, hi. Hi. That was good. <laughs> um, so, for those who doesn't know, my name is Fanja, uh, and I come from France. Um, at first, I have to come here for one year, yeah. and um, it was scary. I was scared because I never do that before. A lot of people ask me, why did I choose Dublin? It wasn't really a choice. Right. Um, it, it was not something I chose. I didn't have the choice to do that. But at the end, the right choice and the only choice was Dublin. Uh, when I was in my church, um, I was comfortable and I was in a routine, but I have the feeling like God had to tell me something. Fanja, I want you to go somewhere else to see all the things. And uh, I want you to, to see my work in the world. So um, I came to Dublin and I met you, um, all of you. I met uh, the Kodamon, the POG. And, um, and at, at first, when I came here, I said to myself, wow, I will be lonely in this country because I didn't have my family and all this stuff, but I find a family here. <laughs> and uh, something I have to learn from God again, to get closer to God and to learn new stuff. When, uh, when I was 15, um, I wanted to play an instrument. Uh, I wanted to play um, a piano because I love that. But the only uh, teacher who was in front of me was uh, the harp uh, teacher. So I said, okay, I will do the harp. Then, uh, four years later, I come to Ireland where the symbol is the harp. So I have the impression that like God have a plan for me and yeah, God have right. a plan for everyone right. because yeah. you have to trust in Him and He, he holds you. You don't know what you will do in the future. Right. You don't know what is your future. Right. And even if you are scared, if, even if you are, yeah. you don't, don't trust Him completely. He knows what He wants to do for you. Amen. So, yeah, trust God and He has a plan for you. Amen. I'm, I'm so proud and impressed with these young people. They are just growing by leaps and bounds. So no telling in the next couple uh, in the next couple months we have our you know, youth service. <laughs> who, 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 yeah, we might get yeah some some of these others that are a little more quiet. I'm not gonna call out any names. <laughs> uh, this guy over here, <laughs> but you, we might hear from these guys. But uh, no, and uh, when when Fania said she got to meet the Padawans, you know. Uh, 
uh, just to give you a little backstory, in case you guys, because I know a lot of a lot of our church, it just Padawans just kind of came out of nowhere. The name. <laughs> so, in case you did not know, just to give you a little backstory, I let these young people choose their name. Now, whether that was wise or not, I don't know how wise that was, but but the we we but we have many many uh, choices out there up for vote, and um, we were we were. Voting, it was it was the end of the vote, and then Kevin just threw in one last minute suggestion, and it happened to be Padawans. We were playing on P O D for Pentecostals of Dublin, and he just changed the Padawans from Star Wars from an A to an O, and said, "Why don't we be the Padawans?" <laughs> and everyone always said, "Well, we'll just put it in the votes." Everyone, sorry. Explain what the Padawans is. I will. I will. The Padawans. The, what? Star Wars. Oh yes. Padawans, for those of you who aren't familiar with Star Wars, and he wanted me to inform you that Padawans is a young Jedi in training. So, but but he, we put this in for uh, for selection, and everyone fell in love with that name. It actually got every single one of the votes. So I said, I guess we are now the Padawans. So yeah, so I recently looked up. I was, you know, in our newsletter that Jelaine and I send back to the states, our monthly newsletter. I I put in little fun facts about Padawans, and I said. This is our youth, and I put in a story about how, how we came to be, how the bottle ones were born. But I, I put, you know, it's PODs for Pentecostals of Dublin, and the Awan, we looked into it I, just because I was curious, and it, it means time or season. So, you know, we, we, the, so the, uh, the youth, you know, we're, we are the, the, the time and season for the Pentecostals of Dublin. We are, we're we're going to step into a new season. Bye. But yeah. I'm so proud of these guys. You know, they, they are... They are just growing by leaps and bounds. And I'm going to ask uh, Ayesa if she would go ahead. She's our, our last person to testify. If she would give her testimony. Gosh, hi, everybody. Uh, hi. Love you just say, speak here. Um, speaking in public terrifies me, like to the bone. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not enough to just try to be, to just try to keep from becoming like the world. You've got to let your differences shine so brightly to those around you that it creates an opportunity for God to show off. Right. I mean, isn't that great? Yeah, right. And he created us, so why should we be ashamed of our Creator and things that set us apart as Christians? That's right. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version because Pastor says so. <laughs> <laughs> um, and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values right. and customs, All right. but be transformed and progressively changed right. as you mature spiritually right. by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, right. that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. It's inadequate to just change outwardly. A change from the inside is inevitable if I want to enter the kingdom of God. It's not so much that I have to do it, it's more so that I want to do it to be closer to God. So uh, that's a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> that's all, folks. I love you all. You know, I told him. 30 seconds to two minutes. I did, I, you know, it didn't have to be. I said just something you're thankful for. It could, you know, it could be anything. You know, I, I expected, you know, just thankful for breath in my body and for you know, <laughs> giving me this, this wonderful church family. I, you know, I, they, they went ahead and gave us many messages, so that was great. So, but, but um, I love these guys. I love this youth group. Um, but I, I'm so thankful that, that I. I you know, I've never had the opportunity to introduce a speaker before, except for myself. Normally when I'm speaking, I'm over here and I introduce myself to speak. <laughs> but uh, I, it's, I'm so I'm honored that I get to, uh, to get to invite the this, this speaker up today, David. He, I, I got the privilege of getting a little preview of his notes, and you guys are in for a treat. Honestly say that he is one of my very best friends. Uh, I love him so much, and we're so thankful that he is part of this church family. David, I want to preach you for two hours more or less. No, it's going to be very quick. I don't know. Yeah. Fighting for the truth. It's not here? No, it's not here. 
And then it's gonna be here, I told you. Okay. <laughs> we can't explain truth without gas. Sorry, without gas. You can't. You can't read your Bible just when you are in trouble. Or when you are in need. You must read it all the time, every day. Answer to it all, Jesus. Why? 